I feel your brain needs some nice tricky workout. I've got just the thing. Are you ready? Yeah. It was raining heavily in the evening. Lauren told her young daughters to go to bed. Sometime later, she went to check on them. As soon as she opened the door to their room, she realized that one of them had sneaked out and returned without her permission. Look at the room and try to figure out which girl it was. It was the girl on the left. Look, both pairs of sneakers are in their place, but the ones on the left are covered with dirt. Alexa has been running at the stadium every day for several months, preparing for upcoming athletic competitions. And they start today. Alexa is warming up when she notices a skinny guy among other runners. His legs look thin and seem to be weak. Alexa feels skeptical about his running abilities. Anyway, they get into the starting position. Three, two, one, go! Alexa is running as fast as she can. Suddenly she notices that the guy she paid attention to earlier is running much faster than her, and he doesn't even look tired. Eventually, he wins. But how did he do it? He's not a real athlete. In fact, he isn't even a human. He doesn't sweat, he doesn't blink, and he has two left hands. Yikes. A guy bought a fishing pole that was six feet three inches long. When he wanted to get on the bus with this fishing pole, the driver stopped him. The man told the guy that he couldn't take anything longer than six feet onto the bus. The guy went back into town and bought one more thing, and the driver allowed him on the bus. What did the guy buy, and what did he do with it? The guy bought a six-fifth long box. He put the fishing pole in it diagonally, and the entire package turned out to be only six feet long. Julia was angry with her boyfriend. She sent a message to her best friend who lived abroad. In this message, the girl complained about the mistakes the guy had made. But her friend sent her a very strange reply. Give, get, give, get, give, get, give, get. What did Julia's friend mean? She wanted to say that Julia should forgive and forget. Gemma was a mermaid living in the Pacific Ocean. One day she was swimming near the surface when she spotted two handsome guys. Both of them seemed to be in trouble. Look at them attentively and try to figure out who Gemma should save first. This wooden boat is indeed filled with water. But it's still okay, and the guy inside can scoop this water out. But this guy's inflatable boat is damaged. He will soon find himself in the water, and this shark will be all too happy to snack on him. He needs Gemma's help urgently. One hotel guest discovered her diamond necklace and earrings were missing after a party in the lobby. Someone must have stolen her jewelry. The hotel management invited a detective. After questioning all guests and staff members, the detective had three suspects. Walter, another hotel guest, Alice, a maid, and Alan, a porter. The detective decided to check their rooms. What he saw was enough for him to understand who the thief was. Can you figure it out too? It's Alice. There's an already packed suitcase in her room. She's about to run away with the stolen jewelry. Galaxy Detective Varamcha was on a case. A spaceship was lost. Her partner, Galaxy Junior Detective Brightbulb, gave her a piece of paper. It was the location of the spaceship. This is what the slip had scribbled on it. Juice, umbrella, potato, ice, tomato, elephant, rice. Where do you think the spaceship is? Right, it's on Jupiter. You just need to pay attention to the first letters of these words. Look at these girls. It seems to be a tough competition. But guess what? One of these girls is cheating. Can you figure out who it is?
It's the girl on the left. Strangely, she doesn't look tired. Ah, do you see that USB port in her neck? She's a robot. Someone stole the money Adam kept in his safe. After watching the security footage, oh the police God. figured out that it had happened at midnight. They questioned three suspects. Julia said she'd gone to bed at 10 p.m. and fallen asleep right away. Parker told the detective he'd been watching TV from 11.45 p.m. to 1 a.m. And Aiden said he'd been with his friends, playing computer games all night. The police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Parker. He was suspiciously specific about the time. Elijah went on a cruise. On the third day, he noticed that one of the staff members was an imposter. Look at them attentively and try to guess who it is. This waitress is actually hiding a police badge under her floral garland. She must be undercover. Samantha needed to check something online, but her phone's battery was flat. She grabbed her brother's device, but it was password protected. Suddenly, a hint appeared on the screen. While I am in the air, I am not in oxygen. I am also in water, but not in hydrogen. I am necessary for all animals, but you won't find me in a zoo. Look in all brains, and you'll find me there too. Can you figure out the password? It's the letter A. Dora went to study for her exam in a coffee shop. She ordered some tea with milk, opened her laptop, and started working. At one point, she went to the bathroom. When she returned, her okay. laptop wouldn't switch on and her cup was empty. Someone had spilled the tea on her computer, causing it to crash. Dora called the manager and told him what had happened. They came up with three suspects. The barista said he had been extremely busy and hadn't seen anything. The supervisor said he was sorry the milk tea had spilled on the computer. He also promised to check if the insurance would cover the cost. The second barista was also sorry about her milk tea damaging the computer. He offered Dora to make her another cup while they were waiting for the police to arrive. The manager immediately understood who had ruined Dora's laptop. Have you figured it out? It was the supervisor. He couldn't have known the tea had milk in it. As for the second barista, he knew about the milk because he was the one to prepare Dora's order. Caroline went for a walk in the park. Deep in her thoughts, the girl wasn't really looking where she was going. That's why she didn't notice a deep pit in the ground and fell into it. When she came round, she found herself in a strange room. There were no windows, no door. The girl saw a table with three apples on it. And was it a note? To get out of this trap, you've got to eat an apple, but only one of them isn't poisoned. Pick carefully. Caroline was terrified. But after examining the apples, she bravely bit into one of them. And nothing bad happened. Which apple did she choose? The girl chose the apple with a worm peeking out of it. If it could eat the fruit, a human probably could too. Detective Adam Bonders worked undercover at a luxurious yeah. resort. The police suspected that the hotel owners were involved in some shady deals. Adam's main task was to sneak into the manager's office and check the documents. But the door was locked, and there was a combination lock. Uh -oh. Adam had to figure out the password. The detective knew he needed to solve a math riddle, and the answer would be the code. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 equals. As soon as he punched in the code, the door opened. What was the correct number? It's 30. There are no mathematical symbols at the end of the first and second lines. It means the whole thing looks like this. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 11 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 11 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 equals 30.
Take a look at this picture and try to memorize each object. Okay, the time is up. Can you sort the extra object out? These scissors don't belong here. Let's make the task a little harder. Take your time to memorize these staplers. And now let's see if you can spot which object didn't appear in the initial picture. Option C is new. The next one. Try to memorize these donuts. Great. I'm sure you remember them all by heart, and you'll have no problem sorting the odd one out. Option A doesn't belong here. Here comes the next set. Try to memorize all the details. Okay, which ice cream didn't appear in the initial picture? B. You'll need to stretch your photographic memory to the limits if you want to solve the next task. Here are six different burgers. Pay attention to all the details. You're going to need them later. And now let's take a look at these nine pictures. Can you spot which of these burgers didn't appear in the initial picture? Ready to see the answer? B, D, and E. The next one. Try to memorize all six rings. Good. Can you sort the three extra rings out? Options A, C, and F don't belong here. Take a look at this picture and try to memorize each parrot. The time is up. Can you spot the parrots that were not present in the original picture? B, E, and F. And now let's go ahead and study the following images. Great job. I'm sure you remember every flower. Let's see if you can find them among these 20 flowers. 1, 7, 9, 15, 16, and 19. The next task is the same. Do your best to memorize all six mugs. Okay, can you spot them among this variety? Ready to see the correct answer? Here they are. How about a task change? Study these six objects very carefully. Ready? And now let's hide them and try to remember where this object was. Over here. Was it too easy? Let's complicate the puzzle a little. You have a few seconds to memorize these 10 objects. Great, can you recall where this image was? It was here. And what if we increase the number of objects to 12? Ready to try? Can you spot this object's location? There it is. Here's the next group of objects. Try to memorize them all. And now let's hide them and swap their places. Can you restore the original sequence in which the objects were placed? Ready to see the answer? There you go. Ready to try again? Here's a group of objects. You know what to do. Let's see if you can restore the original sequence this time. Here's the correct order. Can you handle eight objects? Let's check. Here's the initial sequence. Take your time to memorize it. All right, let's rearrange the images. Can you bring them back to order? This is what the original sequence looked like. Anna arrives at an empty parking lot. Can you guess the number of the place where her car is parked? To make the task easier, we should turn the picture upside down. And now it's obvious that the correct answer is 87. Miranda is a very rich woman. She lives in a fancy circular mansion with diamond chandeliers in every room. 
She also has a diamond table, a movie theater room, a spa room, and a huge garage with five antique cars. But today Miranda is very upset. She has just found out that one of her cars is missing. She asks the butler, but he says he was making her bed. Miranda questions the maid and she says, I was dusting corners. And the chef says, I didn't touch your car. I was making breakfast. Who's lying? The maid. Miranda lives in a circular house, remember? So the maid couldn't be dusting corners. I can be cracked. I can be made. I can be told. I can be played. What am I? I'm a joke. Toby and Bobby decide to prank their English teacher. They succeed, but the teacher wants revenge. He detains them and takes the students to the basement. Teacher, you'll stay here until you solve my riddle. Make one word from the following letters. Toby and Bobby spend seven hours there. And finally, they solve the riddle. And the teacher lets them go. How did they do that? The answer is literally one word. Rose is riding a bike. Suddenly, someone throws a cup of strawberry milkshake in her face. She loses her balance and falls. Rose looks around, finds three suspects, and interrogates them. But each person swears to have nothing to do with the prank. Bianca says, I was just doing my daily workout. I'm on a sugar-free diet, so I would never have bought this disgusting milkshake. Nick says, I was reading a book and enjoying my own milkshake, but I like chocolate, not strawberry. And Lauren says, I was just walking my dog and I didn't look at the road. Who's lying? Lauren, take a look at her bright purple lipstick. There's a similar mark on the cup that was thrown at Rose. Zelda finds a recipe in her granny's old cookbook. But unfortunately, the last ingredient is encoded. Here's a hint to crack it. Although I may have eyes, I cannot see. I have a round face with lots of acne. What am I? Any idea what it might be? It's a potato. Four criminals are planning to rob a bank. They agree to only take the gold bars. They return home and decide to divide the bar among themselves. Can you find a way to separate this shape into four equal parts? Here's the easiest way. Liam gets a spooky invitation to a Halloween party. He comes along and sees something creepy right away. All the guests are vampires except one. Can you spot a human? Take a closer look at the lady in a witchy costume. She's the only one who has round pupils like a normal human being. Someone stole the most expensive painting from the local art gallery. The police arrive at the crime scene and pull some fingerprints. They identify three different people. Two of them are trusted employees of the gallery. But the third fingerprint belongs to an unknown person who might be the robber. The detective suspects four criminals specializing in art thefts. He finds their fingerprints in his database and compares them with the ones from the crime scene. The detective identifies the robber right away. What about you? Can you guess who stole the painting? These fingerprints belong to the gallery employees. So here's the robber. Cherry and Sam spend their honeymoon at a fancy resort. Can you spot any mistakes in this place? pool is frozen. Bob is having dinner and watching TV after work as usual. But can you spot anything odd in this picture?
The mirror reflects a different TV program. There are three different yachts to choose from. Which one should Jake pick? The second yacht has no lifeboats or jackets. It's dangerous to sail like that. As for the third boat, there's a tied up man on board. And this sailor is a ghost. So only the first yacht seems safe and reliable. Kendra, Stacy, and Monica are besties. But in fact, one of them is a bad friend. Can you guess who? Monica. She left an ice cream stain on her friend's coat on purpose. Ryan wants to surprise his wife. He calls the local flower shop and orders a huge bouquet of daisies. An hour later, someone knocks on Ryan's door. He looks through the peephole first and says, Oh wow! A fake delivery guy has arrived! How did he know? The delivery guy didn't know that Ryan had ordered daisies, and he brought roses instead. The next puzzle will test your visual memory. We're gonna show you a couple of images. Try to memorize them as best you can. All right, time is up. And now let's see if you can find the mug that you saw at the beginning. B, what about the ice cream? A, and finally, can you spot the original cat? Option D is correct. Here's the next set of images. You know what to do. Are you ready to spot the butterfly? Option C is correct. What about the gnome? D. Can you find the initial candle? B. And what about the comb? It's over here. And now try to memorize these images. Let's check if you can find the glove that you saw at the beginning. Option D is correct. What about the phone? It's over here. Can you find the original pencil? A. And what about the broccoli? It's over here. Can you spot the shoe? B. Nina's brother decides to prank her and changes a six-letter password on her laptop. He leaves a little clue in Nina's room so that she could crack the code. Can you help her? To solve this riddle, we should take a look at the calendar on the wall. The marked dates imply a number sequence, 6, 12, 15, 24, 5, and 18. But the password should contain six letters, not numbers. We need to find the corresponding letter in the alphabet. 6 for F, 12 for L, 15 for O, and so on. And the final password is flower. Alex is going to the Moroccan desert. Alex decides to go explore the local market. He wanders around and a stranger approaches him. Stranger. Hey, mister. Would you like to buy these ancient statues? I found them in a tomb. They're thousands of years old. Alex gets very interested. He loves history. He takes a closer look at the statues and gets mad. Alex. Your statues are fake. How did he know? The 
The first statue is holding a phone. The second has the hieroglyph of a bicycle. The third statue also can't be that old. Back then no one knew what the earth looked like. And the fourth statue is wearing sneakers. Busted. Robert is a professional thief. He knows that Mrs. Gold is hiding a diamond necklace in her safe. But now he fails to crack the required eight number code. What about you? Let's take a closer look at the paintings. See these dominoes? It's a clue. They form the code 3, 2, 1, 5, 6, 1, 2, 4. Stephen is building a new house for his family. He's visiting the construction site to check how the builders are doing. Stephen finds out that someone has broken an expensive antique mirror. Only three people had access to the house. Stephen questions all of them. The supervisor says, I was feeling sick yesterday, so I went home earlier to get some rest. The interior designer says, Yesterday the mirror was fine. I arrived here in the evening to take some pictures for my design project. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And the mover says, I wasn't here yesterday. I spent the entire day at the construction supermarket. So I don't know who did it. Who's lying? The designer. There's a selfie among the pictures that she took yesterday. Take a look at her glasses. They reflect the opposite wall in the broken mirror. Busted. Detective Smith was called to investigate a burglary at the city's museum. A priceless diamond disappeared and the thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Detective Smith gathered three suspects. The security guard, the museum's curator, and a visitor. The security guard said he only left his post during lunchtime, and he could swear that the diamond still wasn't missing at that time. The museum curator spent the day guiding a tour of the museum for a foreign group. They came to see the diamond at the beginning of the tour and it was still shining bright in its place. The visitors said he only popped in for a quick visit and didn't even pass through the Metzi Isle where the diamond was kept. After these three interviews, Detective Smith found the thief. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. First of all, he knew the exact location of the diamond inside the museum. Plus, take a look at that string he is fiddling with in his left hand. Detective Smith pulled it from under his sleeve and... Voila! The diamond was attached to it. I guess he didn't have time to go home and get rid of the diamond, huh? Julie and her friends decided to spend the weekend at a cabin in the woods. They arrived on Friday evening and spent the night playing board games and telling spooky stories. When they woke up on Saturday morning, they found that someone had stolen all their food supply. The door's glass was shattered, but other than that, there were no signs of who could have done it. So. The group decided to search the surrounding woods to see if they could find the culprit. Take a good look at the scene the group stumbled upon, and see if you can find out who took their food. What's that at the upper left corner? Those look like barefoot prints, huh? And not just one, but rather an entire family of bears. Oh, and they even left an Oreo wrapper on the ground as evidence. Yep, these grizzlies were the culprits for sure. On a snowy winter afternoon, Dr. Brown was resting in front of the fireplace. Suddenly, somebody threw a snowball at his window. The hit was so strong that the glass shattered. Dr. Brown stood up just in time to see three neighborhood boys running away. They were brothers with the names John Smith, Mark Smith, and Dave Smith. The next day, a paper note was left on Dr. Brown's door. There, it was written, Smith, he threw the snowball. Dr. Brown immediately knew which brother had done it. Can you figure it out too? It was Mark. You see, the note said, Question Mark Smith. He threw the snowball. But the boys were clever and put a var. 
instead to test Dr. Brown's detective abilities. A man carrying two bags of sand crosses Genovia's border every day on a bicycle. Every time customs officers stop and search him to see if he's trying to smuggle anything illegal. But the officers can't find any proof that the man is a smuggler. The man laughs and crosses the border successfully, smuggling an item per trip. Can you figure out what he's smuggling? That's easy. He's a bicycle smuggler. He distracts the guards with two bags of sand. But every day he is crossing the Genovian border with a new bicycle. Smart guy, huh? Mrs. Pinkface is the world's fastest robber. She works alongside the criminal mastermind Zebra Mask. But Mrs. Pinkface was recently caught and put in jail. She and her partner in crime had already set up a plan in case this happened. Zebra Mask will pass outside the prison fence and send Pinkface a signal. 45 seconds after the signal, he will turn off the electric fence, giving her a few seconds to make her prison break. The thing is, Pinkface doesn't have a clock. She only has a lighter and two fuses. The fuses are flammable and she knows they both burn for precisely one minute. They won't burn evenly, so if she cuts them in half, one side might burn for 40 seconds, while the other burns for 20 seconds. How can Pinkface use the fuses to time exactly 45 seconds and make her unique prison break? Here's the key insight. If Pinkface lights the same fuse on both ends simultaneously, it will burn out in precisely 30 seconds. To time the last 15 seconds, she will have to light the second fuse. She can light both ends of the first fuse at the same time to time 30 seconds and light the end of the second fuse. When the first fuse burns out, she'll know 30 seconds of the second fuse is also burnt. So, by lighting the other end of the second fuse, she'll be able to time 45 seconds and make her jailbreak. You just came back from a long holiday trip. You bought a new suitcase to store all the new things you got. But when arriving home, you forgot the code to open it. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone to help you decipher the code of the lock. 682. One digit is right and in its place. 614. One digit is right but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are right but both are in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right but in the wrong place. What's the three-digit code? Zero four two. Friday morning started busy in Somerville. The police station got a call saying that a woman had just robbed a bank and was seen entering Sunset Elementary School. The police chief hurried over to the school and found there were two teachers present that morning. He immediately knew which teacher was the thief. Can you tell who it was? Take a look at the second teacher's long sleeve shirt. It has a little bit of cash peeking out of it. She's most certainly the thief. The Apex 18 space station called NASA's headquarters to report a crime. On a recent mission, Astronauts recovered a valuable piece of evidence that could prove there was life on Mars. Andy, the mission chief, said he put the piece of rock inside a safe, located in the storage room. The next morning he went to the storage room to put on his astronaut suit, and noticed that the safe was open. And oh no, the rock was missing. NASA conducted an online investigation to find out who the thief was. Paula said she wasn't feeling well the day before. So she spent the day in her room. James said he spent the previous day fixing a broken solar panel outside the spaceship and didn't see anything. Rebecca spent the previous 24 hours talking to NASA's space center to resolve a problem. Can you tell who is lying? It's James. 
If he went outside to check on solar panels, he first needed to go into the storage room to put on his spacesuit. Plus, there's a rock-shaped item in his left pocket. He must be the culprit. Tuesday morning, Amy got a call from her boss, Tom. He was in distress because a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Amy immediately went there to question the employees. She soon gathered three suspects. Elijah said he had spent the previous evening at the movies. Mason had taken his girlfriend to dinner, and Evelyn had visited an art gallery. It didn't take long for Amy to understand who was lying. Why? It was Elijah. Take a close look at his ticket. The date is for Sunday and not the night before. This means he's probably the one lying. Peter was lost in the woods when he encountered an evil magician. The magician cast a spell on him that transported Peter to an empty room inside a huge tower. To make things worse, the evil sorcerer put the tower on fire. The room Peter was in had no doors and only a small window. Thankfully, he found three magic potions that could maybe help him escape. If he drank the first potion, he would get incredible physical strength. If he chose the second potion, he could summon any animal he wanted to help him. And if he drank the last potion, he would turn into a vampire. Which potion should Peter choose? Well, no animal could help him escape the tower, and even if he had all the strength in the world, he wouldn't be able to beat the fire. But if he turned into a vampire, then he could transform into a bat and fly away through the little window. So the third bottle it is. Katie got lost in the desert. She walked for hours when suddenly, she came across a huge oasis. But to reach the main waterfall, where she could drink some water, she had to cross a bridge. There were three bridges leading to the same place. The first bridge was far from the ground, and its rope looked like it could rip at any second. The second bridge had some hungry-looking alligators crawling on it. The last bridge stood above a lake full of poisonous water plants. Which bridge should she choose? The last one. The bridge stands above a poisonous lake, but she won't touch the water when crossing it. Rupert was working in his office when a huge power shortage turned off all the lights in the building. He heard footsteps approaching behind him, and the next thing he knew, he was feeling dizzy. Rupert passed out and woke up in a tiny room that had nothing other than a metallic door. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. He noticed that beside the door, there was a little device where a red sign appeared, asking for a password. Below the device, there was a piece of paper with the following hint. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Rupert read the note aloud several times before he finally figured out what the password was. Can you guess what password he typed into the device? He typed in one time the number 2. Three times the number 4 five times the number six, and seven times the number eight. Phew, that wasn't obvious, huh? Bill and Jonah found themselves stuck inside the cavern of the Great Genie. There was nothing there but a wall with three buttons. There was a red button, a yellow one, and a green. Somewhere on the floor, they found a note that read, T-D-U-P-T-R-N-O-R-E-H-E-B-S-S-T. E. They clicked one of the buttons and managed to open a hidden door on the wall. Which button did they choose? The red button. They unscrambled the words on the note and discovered it read, Press the red button. Miss Taylor is the owner of a boutique that produces and sells expensive ceramics. On a Friday, when the working week was almost finished, she went to deposit the day's money inside the safe. 
and was shocked to find out it was all gone. Someone had stolen it. Miss Taylor suspected it should have been one of her workers. She asked each one of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she had been prospecting for new clients. Jake, the potter, said he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Lily, the designer, said she had been working, but she also admitted she hadn't been really productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Jake, there are five working days in a regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Probably the day he used to steal Miss Taylor's money. A foreign tourist came to a police station. He said, a guy with a tattoo and a long beard forced me to give him my wallet. The police officer told him, don't worry, the criminal is one of these quintuplets. They've already been arrested. You just have to identify the one who attacked you. Look at these men. Can you help the tourist figure out who the attacker was? Not this guy. He has a tattoo on his left arm. Not this one. He can only use one hand. This guy has a short beard. This guy is wearing a cast, which leaves us with this man. Now, I've got a few Rebus puzzles for you to crack. How hard can it be? This Rebus is tasty. It stands for scrambled eggs. How about this one? It means misunderstanding between friends. Hmm, what could this mean? It's downtown. You're walking through the park when you hear footsteps behind your back and everything goes black. When you come to your senses, you find yourself in a dark basement illuminated by 15 burning candles. I'll set you free if you solve my riddle correctly. But if not, you won't ever leave this place. Oh no, there's uh -oh. someone in the shadows. You see 15 candles. I'll blow out six of them. How many candles will remain? What's going to be your answer? If you tell the mysterious person that six candles will remain, they'll let you go. After all, the rest of the candles will eventually burn down completely, all but the six which have been blown out. Someone stole expensive jewelry from Mrs. Doris's hotel room. It happened around 6 a.m. When the police came, the hotel owner told them that there was a heavy snowfall early in the morning. It destroyed all the evidence. Suddenly, one of the police officers spotted an infamous criminal. He had been accused of committing several robberies, but always managed to get away with it. The man denied being at the hotel at the time. I only came half an hour ago, he claimed. The police officers immediately understood he was lying. How? There's a thick layer of snow on the criminal's car. If he had been driving to the hotel, there would be no snow on the hood. It would have melted or got blown away by the wind. And since it's sunny now, it can't be new snow. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on her door. She looked through the people and saw an unknown man standing outside. He introduced himself. Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called the security. Why? The badge on the man's shirt says Chloe Smith. 
and that's a female name, which means the man is a fake manager. Damien had problems with money. That's why he had to sell the only valuable thing he had, an expensive painting of a 17th century artist. The man who bought it showed the canvas to his friend, a police detective. After looking at the picture attentively, the detective said that the painting was a fake. How did he figure it out? There are electric power lines in the picture, but they didn't exist in the 17th century. Now, look at these teachers. Can you figure out which of them is a millionaire? A, B, or C? Ha! Tricked ya! It's actually not a riddle, but a mini psychological test. If you decided that teacher A is a millionaire, you're amazingly energetic. You're also spontaneous and always ready to explore new places. If your choice was teacher B, big noisy parties aren't for you. They can leave you emotionally drained. And if you thought the millionaire was teacher C, you're a social butterfly and the soul of any party. So, how true is this? Tell me in the comments below. Yeah. Detective Thomas went camping with his friends. At one point, he went to get some firewood. When he got back, he saw one of his friends, Alice, lying on the ground unconscious. There were three other people in the camp. Julie, Alice's friend, Mary, Alice's sister, and Adam, Alice's boyfriend. Thomas asked all of them to show him their belongings. Look at their stuff and try to figure out who has something to do with the state Alice is in. It's Julie. If you look attentively, you'll notice a picture of Adam among her things. She must have a crush on him. She likely hurt Alice out of jealousy. Eve went on an expedition to Antarctica with a group of scientists. Three days into the expedition, Eve woke up and found out that all of oh, her no. colleagues were missing. The only thing she found was an envelope. Inside, there was a letter. Apparently, a crazy scientist had taken her friends, and now Eve could only save them by cracking his riddles. Here's the first one. How many months have 28 days? The number you'll get is the number of feet you'll need to walk before you start digging. Eve knew the correct answer. All 12 months have 28 days. She walked 12 feet and started digging. The next clue was waiting for her there. It was a bag with a book, a can of paint, a screwdriver, and a note that said that the scientist had locked Eve's friends in his lab in a cave. It didn't take Eve long to find the cave, but there were four entrances leading inside. Passage 1 was guarded by venomous spiders. Passage 2 had a huge and pretty aggressive monkey blocking the entrance. In Passage 3, Eve saw a mammoth. And at the entrance to Passage 4, there was a bottomless well. Uh -oh. Which tunnel should Eve choose? The third one. Mammoths have been extinct for thousands of years, so the animal the girl sees is likely a hologram. Eve entered the lab and saw a dog inside, but it wasn't a regular dog, it was a robot dog. Barking, it ran after Eve. The girl remembered she had a book, a can of paint, and a screwdriver in the bag she had found. What can she use to get rid of the robot? Eve should open the can with paint and throw it at the robot. Since the paint is liquid, it will likely cause the robo-dog to short-circuit. Eve breathed out in relief and started looking around. Suddenly, she saw a key on the floor. The girl picked it up and went to the next room. As soon as she walked in, the door closed behind her back. And a bizarre-sounding voice started to speak. In 15 minutes, toxic gas will fill the room. 
Your only chance to survive is to take the antidote before the gas is released. At this moment, Eve spotted a small box. She opened it and saw four pills and an instruction. Take four pills, one every 15 minutes. Will Eve have time to take all the pills before the gas fills the room? Yes, absolutely! The first 15 minutes will start after she takes the first pill, so taking four pills will take her 45 minutes. Eve got out of the room and finally found her friends, all tied up. She immediately set them free, but they needed to get out of there as soon as possible. They saw three doors leading outside. Behind the first door, there were hungry polar bears. Behind the second door, the air was so cold it was impossible to survive there. And behind the third door, there was a waist-deep lake with piranhas. Which way should the friends choose? The third one. The lab is in an ice cave, remember? The water in the lake will be frozen. They will simply walk on the ice and get out of the cave. Freedom! <laughs>